Thank you very much, uh, Mike, and I'm delighted to be here, and uh, I want to uh, also thank Governor Patrick and Secretary Bialecki for conceiving of this summit. And it was great to hear the speaker say that there's a uh, caucus in the uh, Massachusetts House to focus on manufacturing, because when I became a member of Congress in 1993, the first thing that I did was get together with a Republican from New Jersey, uh, Bob Franks, and we started the first ever manufacturing task force within the Congress of the United States, and we worked with uh, NIST and other federal agencies to come up with a publication that could get folks to focus on manufacturing in the United States. And it's based on a basic principle, right? If a country is going to live well, if a country is going to have a debate about how do you have redistribution of, uh, of wealth to help those in society, to help programs, then a country needs to produce wealth, which means you have to produce products. We cannot economically prosper unless the United States and unless Massachusetts produces products. So manufacturing is really at the core of what we need to do as a country and as a state. Now, I'm uh, delighted to be here to talk a little bit about the University of Massachusetts and the University of Massachusetts Lowell. And I think first and foremost, you have to think about UMass as a research engine that really drives the economy of this state. First and foremost, we're a $2.8 billion enterprise in Massachusetts with five campuses in Lowell and Amherst, Dartmouth, Boston, and our medical school in Worcester. And we do that with about 16% of our funding coming from the Commonwealth. So it's incumbent upon UMass to be entrepreneurial in everything that we do. And we've looked over the last few years for new ways to be innovative, for new ways to partner, partner with private universities, to partner with, uh, uh, with the private sector. Enrollment at all of our campuses is growing. We have over 71,000 students in the UMass system, and at UMass Lowell, we've grown enrollment by about 40% to over 16,000 students. Why is UMass important to Massachusetts? Because 80% of the students who come to UMass stay in Massachusetts in the short term. And in fact, 65% of those graduates stay permanently in Massachusetts. And I will tell you that uh, according to a uh, uh, recent report, if we could develop and do a better job in advanced manufacturing, we'd keep more of UMass graduates, because in our studies we find that UMass graduates, when they, if they leave Massachusetts, is usually in search of a job that sends them to another part of the, uh, the country. When I talk about research, to let you, let you know what UMass is as, in terms of a research engine, we're third behind Harvard and MIT in terms of research. At Lowell, we've grown our research by 65% over the last six years, and we've put a focus on it. And what's interesting about our research in Lowell, our roots are really in research that has a high likelihood of commercialization. That is, the, that research that has a likelihood of investing in technologies that will create companies and eventually create jobs. And that's really the roots of the Lowell campus. The Lowell Textile School was formed in, in the late 1800s uh, specifically to train folks to work in the uh, textile mills as the American Industrial Revolution was booming and on the banks of the Merrimack River in Lowell and Lawrence and in Haverhill. So uh, we have always had our roots in working with the private sector and working with um, research that helps develop companies. Uh, in a critical sector, life sciences. The University of Massachusetts ranked number one over the past three years in patents. Meanwhile, we're gaining by any metric you would measure uh, a university. We developed at Lowell a strategic plan. We engaged our faculty and we have undertaken an effort to transform that university. And I thank the speaker for mentioning the new Emerging uh, Technologies Building, which I want the speaker to know we got a $5 million contribution. We now call it the Mark and Lisa Saab uh, uh, Building. But, uh, but we've raised over $15 million privately. The Commonwealth uh, provided $35 million, and we borrowed $25 million. And what we have in that building is an $80 million uh, residence for some of the best uh, high bay labs, clean rooms, anywhere north of Boston. And that building is going to have a dramatic impact on the economy, not just of the Merrimack Valley, but all of Massachusetts. But beyond the physical transformation, UMass Lowell is, in addition to developing uh, tremendous talent for Massachusetts, uh, we're now a nationally ranked university. We've been around for 120 years, but three years ago, 
we were ranked as a top-tier nationally ranked research university by U.S. News and World Report. We recently, uh, a publication uh, uh, online, uh, payscale.com, ranked UMass Lowell as 10th among all public universities uh, in America in terms of uh, the uh, wages or income that our students have. We were 50th uh, in America, if you count private and public universities. Just yesterday, Business Insider uh, released a report that showed that UMass Lowell was the most underrated in terms of rankings, underrated university in America. And the reason is because of our focus in science and technology. When our alums graduate, they do well. We had the best return of investment uh, of, uh, of, of any public university. We were in the top nine of any public university uh, in the country because we have a relatively low uh, uh, price in terms of uh, tuition and fees. But our graduates, when they leave, are business ready. They're ready to go. The UMass system has a robust research enterprise that works hand in hand with industries like advanced technologies. And it's easy to understand how biomedical discoveries of breakthroughs in nanotechnology can emerge from laboratory research. And the UMass system really has the faculty and the students engaged in this type of research. But what might be less apparent is the degree that getting new drugs, for example, to market require more than just basic research. It requires development of the manufacturing processes that will ensure that a drug uh, that a patient takes is exactly the same one that they get when they refill their prescription. It takes advanced research to make uh, those procedures cost-effective and reliable. At UMass Lowell, we have a biomanufacturing faculty and facilities. The UMass Medical Schools oversees mass biologics, where vaccines and other drugs are produced. And we operate the only FDA-approved manufacturing plant at a university in the United States. All of these assets play an important role in ensuring that biopharmaceuticals can be manufactured consistently and at large quantities. Likewise, in nanotechnology, UMass Lowell and UMass Amherst have one of uh, two of only four nationally funded nano nanomanufacturing centers in America. What does that mean? It means there, uh, there are centers of excellence that focus on manufacturing using nanotechnology. And we have always, as I mentioned in Lowell, stayed close. Our scientists and engineers are close to the shop floors. I mentioned our emergency, uh, uh, our new emerging technology building. It's a place where ingenuity literally meets industry. And your companies have access at this facility to class 100, class 1,000, or class 10,000 uh, 10, uh, clean rooms. Now, obviously, there's a fee involved because we have to pay the bills. Uh, we are for field emission scanning electronic microscope. We have high bay manufacturing rooms that ac can accommodate very large equipment and offers uh, ample uh, production lines. Our strengths at Lowell at plastics engineering are unparalleled. We have graduates, over 3,000 alumni, all over the world playing leadership roles in the plaxids industry worldwide. Like many of the UMass campuses, UMass Lowell is focused on other key sectors of the Massachusetts economy, like defense, robotics, clean energy, and life sciences. Defense companies and the, uh, and the Department of Defense agencies look to us for technology-based fibers and lightweight, stronger, or flame-retardant materials. We have a co-location and a research partnership with Natick Army Labs, the Natick uh, Soldier Research Development and Engineering Systems, and we're uh, poised to deepen our already strong relationship with Raytheon. The speaker mentioned robotics, and our New England Robotics Validation Experimentation Center, which we call our Nerve Center, uh, opened in February, and that enables us to partner with companies like iRobot, Adept Mobile Robotics, and KTS Associates. It's a fabulous program. Through our alternative energy research, we partner with companies like 7AC Technologies of Wuben to solve problems related to membranes and adhesion. And our wind energy research is figuring out how to make wind turbine blades from sustainable bio-derived materials. At UMass Dartmouth, faculty expertise in marine sciences and relationships with the Wood Holes Institute, advancing the field of marine renewable energy, and researchers at UMass Boston are developing tools that could help prevent 
coastal erosion, and other climate change impacts. I want to mention the life sciences, UMass Lowell and the UMass Medical School are starting a new pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical sciences program, and the medical school is just a fabulous partner with, with us. Uh, the speaker came up to visit, uh, as Secretary Bialecki did, uh, to our Massachusetts Medical Device Development Center. It's another UMass Lowell, UMass uh, Medical School partnership that helps startup medical device companies move their product from ideas to patent towards production by providing phototyping, by providing clinical trial services, as well as incubation space in labs. We are very, very excited at the direction that our university is, is headed. And, and the other point that I would make, because we have a public mission, we are committed and we act on the ethos of the public land-grant higher education system. That is that we keep, in, keep the Industrial Revolution revolutionary. I want to thank the Patrick administration for providing the tools to us. I will tell you that um, given what's happening at the University of Massachusetts generally, and looking specifically at what's happening at UMass Law, I feel strongly that the university is poised to help move this commonwealth uh, further. And I think that, uh, frankly, there's no way this, this economy in this state continues to prosper or we get to where we want to be in ad advanced manufacturing without our great public research institution, the University of Massachusetts. Finally, I would tell you, I, I met with some of the folks from the, the WIDs, the workforce uh, uh, boards. We have a group in, uh, in our part of the state, the Northeast Advanced Manufacturing Consortium, and we uh, intend to work hand in hand to make sure that our research, to make sure our faculty members are collaborating and engage with our efforts to bring manufacturing and, and make advanced manufacturing prosperous. So I'm delighted to have been invited. Uh, if there's time afterwards, I'd love to answer any questions that folks have. Or if you have questions or are interested in how we can collaborate, uh, because believe me, our faculty members know how to collaborate with business and industry. We'd love the opportunity to work with you. Thanks very much.